Cool. All right. So today is Mother's Day, um, in case you didn't know that yet. Mother's Day is one of those days is, um, when we have secular holidays that coincide with Sundays. They can present some challenges for pastors of what to say on such days. A few years ago on Mother's Day, I was very, very specifically asked to preach about Mother's Day. And I struggled with this a lot. Because you see, Mother's Day is a very complicated day for many people. Women who are struggling with infertility, women who have tried for years, maybe, and have been told that they can't have children. Or maybe for those out there who have recently lost their mothers, the first Mother's Day without your mom. Or for those who maybe didn't have a mother figure in their life. Maybe they lost their mother young, or maybe they just didn't have a very motherly mother. Or for mothers out there who have lost children. This is a highly emotional day for many, many people filled with so many complex emotions. And so a few years ago, when this Mother's Day came around, the church was filled with flowers. All of the leadership that morning were women with little boutonnieres and me. And for the first time in my preaching career, I walked into the pulpit with a blank piece of paper in front of me. I had no idea what to say. Should I get up there and say words of consolation? Or should I do what they wanted me to do and just ignore the potential pain that is sitting out in the pews, being masked by all the flowers and fancy Sunday clothes? It's a hard day. And I chose to do neither. Instead, I did the thing that I'm gonna do this morning and I named it. And we have to own what this means for us. And then we turn to God. And I invite you all to turn to God now, this God of love. See, oftentimes we can get a lot of male language for God. Father, usually, usually in the pronouns of he, him for God, as you'll see that in many, many translations. And, and maybe not so much here as we do in other places, because uh, the previous pastor was really good at um, making sure to acknowledge and be sensitive around that. Um, she's amazing at it, even much better at it than I am. And a part of this like male centered language that we get for God really just has to do with like the syntax of languages, right? Um, that Hebrew and Greek are both languages that have the article that come with it. And so that just means that in, you know, in a, in a language where it had to be given a gender, that's what happens, right? But the thing is, is, is like we know that God is not a man right? That God is not a man sitting on some fancy chair in the clouds, dictating what's happening here on earth. This father who would have sent his little boy down to be killed. Because this language, this image of God limits God a lot. And it also doesn't sound very much like that God of love, does it? like the one that we read about every single Sunday, how God loved the world so much that God has done all of these wonderful things for us as a divine parent, the God of love. We hear a bit more about this God of love again in our gospel for this morning. The God that invites them into relationship, that cares for them and shows them over and over again how to abide in this love. The kind of divine parenting, this kind of divine parenting is I think just as much motherly as it is fatherly. And for some of us, depending on your relationship with each of your parents, could be a bit more motherly than fatherly. 
Or maybe even for others still, it is a different parental figure altogether for you. This kind of love. This is the agape love. Because you see in Greek, there are three different kinds of love, uh, which you know, makes it a little bit hard for we English speakers because we only have one word. So all of the different kinds of love in the Bible, I'll just translate as love in English. But there are three. The first one is philios, which is the friendly, brotherly, sisterly, camaraderie kind of love. Most often, this is the kind of love that we feel for one another, for our family and our friends. It is deep and it is an honest love. And then there's eros, which is the erotic love. It is passionate and it is intimate. And then finally, there's agape love. Agape love is the love that we always get from God. Agape love is the unconditional love, the kind of love that a parent has for a child. You know, like that, that motherly hen who would pluck out anybody's eyes if you came near her little chicks. This kind of love is unconditional, unwavering, indestructible, and infinite. This is the kind of love that God has for all of us. And Jesus reminds us that the greatest agape love that one can have is to lay down one's life for a friend or beloved or dear one are also acceptable translations there. To lay down your life for your beloveds. If that doesn't sound like a motherly love, I don't know what does. A friend reminded me this week as we were talking about this passage about the words from George Washington in the Broadway play Hamilton. And George says, dying is easy, young man, but living is hard. Because we, we often hear this verse of laying down one's life for our beloveds. We hear this as we are to die for our beloveds. But instead I offer you is laying down your life, not dying, but rather giving all of yourself in this kind of love, all of your life. Sounds like agape love to me. Mothers give all of themselves to their children in a way that is astonishing. And probably potentially the closest thing to agape love that we truly experience in our earthly lives, the kind of unconditional love from a parent. And for those who are biological maternal parent mothers, uh, I think like childbirth alone, if that's not love. <laughs> but in every aspect of their lives, these parents one step after another, fiercely loving, protecting, serving, and laying down all of themselves for their children. This is, I think, what it means to be a mother. And so on this most complicated of holidays, my wish is that each and every one of you, every one of us at some point in time in our lives, feel this agape love, whether it be a mother, a father, or a different parental figure, that there is someone that gives you the kind of unconditional and unwavering love close to a kind of godly love. And I hope that you honor them and remember them. And I hope that you can share this love with others, just as Jesus invites us each and every time over and over again for us to share this love, this agape love that comes from God. Amen.